Welcome to our podcast. Today we've got John from Life Beyond Bricks with us. We've obviously got Jason, the motorhome man, Reynolds, and my name, Shane Malpass. That's what we're talking about today, then, Jason. Rather energetic, Shane, at the moment, isn't it? What is? You. Me? Ah, I've got four shots of coffee in this. I'm good to go for a while. John, you're living in your motorhome. Do you like this feeling, by the way? Yes, very nice. Very nice van. You lying? What? It's all right. You've so got it's, a good, it's a good entry-level van, yeah. Oh, that's it. Kick the entry level in. I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> what about the autograph? What do you think to that? Oh, they're nice, actually. I, I did notice that the advances haven't got any wall boards or anything like that. I was really surprised. I was, uh, I was like, oh, yeah, no wall boards. <laughs> Does your Adrian? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I don't think I've ever checked a van thus far that hasn't actually had wall boards. This is the first one. All the advances like that. Yeah. Like Bailey's. Yeah. What, like this? I'm pretty sure the autographs are as well. Nah, the autographs will have wall boards, surely. They can't have, they can't not have. This is the new style, John. But it is the Magnolia, advanced. all the way around. <laughs> yeah. Is that the new colour? Maggie, yeah. Maggie. How's life been for you, John? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Apart from the uh, obvious, apart from the obvious that we sh we shall not mention, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's better now. It's a lot easier with the where campsites can now open for people that live full time. Their mate, their their vans, their motorhomes is a lot easier because you know you can you know, within reason we can pretty much go anywhere. So yeah, it's good. You went to Scotland, didn't you? We did, yeah. During uh, when it was all when we were all free to move about, we went to Scotland. It was it was lovely, actually, really nice. And uh, at that time, Scotland were very much, you know, we we're open for business. We need the tourism, so yeah, we went there. It was uh, lovely. It was the first time we've ever ventured further than um, uh, what's it called? Where's the mountain bike and World Cup? Uh, I can't remember where it is. Doncaster? Newcastle? <laughs> no, in Scotland. <laughs> Glasgow, Inverness, and firmly. No, it's one with the mountains. It escapes me. Mount Glasgow? No, where's Ben Nevis? Wales. I oh. thought Ben Nevis was no, in Wales. <laughs> 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 Did you go right the way really to the top end? Sorry? Did you go right the way to yeah, the top Yeah, we went, went to, to the Highlands, really, yeah. What was he called? What were you after? The what, what? Ben Nevis? Is it Ben Nevis? Yeah, it is Ben Nevis. Ben Nevis Range, Fort yeah. William. Fort William. That's it. I don't know why that, that escaped me. Thank but. you, Fred. <laughs> yeah, I've always, Google. always been to uh, Scotland, uh, to Fort William, but we've never actually gone further up. It's about halfway up, but yeah, we've never actually been like, right up to the high of the very, sort of, almost the very tip. Yeah, it was nice. Did it exceed expectations? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. The sort of the, like, the landscapes and stuff, just absolutely incredible. Um, it was yeah, just really breathtaking, as they would say. And how was the van up there? Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, I mean the van. I mean we've been living in it for quite some time, so it, the van's well set up anyway. So. so so what's the van that you've got? We've got now Adria i6 Adria Sonic i600 yes. SP. So it's the it's the little seven meter long. But a transverse bed, yeah. one, one at the front as well. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty well set up to be honest. We've got like full full air suspension as well, so we don't need to worry about levelling the van or anything. So yeah, it's uh, it's nice. Makes it nice and easy to tour. Okay, so I, which, uh, I'm assuming you use the, the transverse bed. Yeah, we use the transverse bed at the back, and then if we if we need to, if we upset each other, we. One sleeps at the front, one sleeps at the back. You all touch, you're snoring too loud, you get kicked off. Basically, people. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is nice to have that sort of that uh, that bed at the front, just as an occasional. If you need to, you know, you know because like we took our niece around away when we first got the van, or when we when we first started touring. Actually, we just took our niece away, and it was I slept in the front bed, and the niece and Tash slept in the rear. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's really nice. It's good to have a fold away bed that it's yeah. there. I know that some A-classes, the real sort of top-line ones, a lot of them you don't come with. They a, don't come with them. No. Don't come with a bed, so it is nice to have. I must admit. Yeah, I think that was something that I got. There was a, a couple of older 
uh, Cathargos. Yeah. You know, if it was talking 2007, 2008, I'm looking at the price list of like £180,000 <laughs> and thinking they could have put a bed above the cab. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Uh, although it is nice to have the storage because imagine the storage you get, like the overhead, the yeah, overhead so, lockers. So, I mean, it's probably two yeah. couple of lockers like that. I'm thinking, well, you've got, it's a seven ton van. Yeah. You've got a garage the size of <laughs> <laughs> most new build houses, but you haven't got <laughs> yeah. a bed above. But yeah, it is nice. Was there many motorhomes up in Scotland? There were hundreds and hundreds awesome. over, yeah. There was more motorhomes than there were uh, cars. They all, most of them were higher. It, yeah, all the higher companies yeah. were up there, basically. The North Coast 500 was literally swarming. It was, I've heard a lot about that North Coast 500. What actually is, is it? Is it me or is that took off this year? Uh, I think it, well, to be honest, I don't really know how popular it's been because we didn't actually, we tried to avoid it because we knew it was going to be really busy. But I'm, I'm guessing it was quite quite busy because you know, people weren't flying away so people that had holidays plans probably decided they were going to hire a motor home instead with the money they probably got back from their cancellations and stuff so yeah i imagine it was it was pretty busy but then it always is apparently it's always like mentally right. mentally busy so it, the north coast 500 is basically the all the roads around the the coastline is it 500 miles it's a yeah it's yeah. around that yeah yeah right. wales wales were trying to do that as well they're going to do the um the wales way yeah. which is going to be similar thing which is what the wales were trying to promote before obviously covid hit and then obviously that was that was that <laughs> so yeah the wales are trying to set up uh some airs as well so they they want to go like continental europe they want to try and set up some motorhome airs in places a little bit more space for it i guess haven't they yeah yeah i mean they Obviously, there's a lot of agricultural land that they could yeah. probably use. Yeah, there's probably agricultural land that's not being used for a massive amount at the moment. So yeah, there's probably they could probably do it, and obviously it would absolutely massively boost their tourism industry, which would be right, would be time good. Too, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, <coughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, because now Especially for the up and coming year. Yeah, yeah. I still think it's going to be a long time till the sort of flights properly yeah the flyaway holidays get going again so yeah i think it's gonna yeah. it's gonna be busy i think still well, yeah i think it will be a, a busy year because we're the first country to get the vaccine yeah and it's going to take you know, depending on who you listen to until july until everybody's vaccined and we can start living life normally but then you've got to sort the rest of the world out yeah i think i think there's a, i was reading a study that they reckon it's going to be 19 months before everybody in UK is vaccinated, which is a long time. 66 um, million people. Yeah, and I, th I think currently there's a lot of people that won't do it. Yeah. So that's going to delay things. So you've easily got another good year over yeah. here, but that's just over here. And then you've got the rest of the world that's to get it, vaccinated yeah. and get it out too. And, and if, yeah. uh, if obviously, because the, the testing of this vaccine has been you know, quite rushed, as, as it, I suppose it should be, but if there is a severe side effect with a catchment of people that haven't yeah. had it before then that's just going to halt it completely and then and then i don't know where we'll be no i mean there's somebody i don't know how much truth in there was but they're talking about in in some place in europe france and spain that it's going to be as, as late as march until they start putting the vaccine out yeah mm. which is you know that then puts you till the end of the year until you can go to those so it's basically staycation this year i think so i think it will be next year again i think it will be where are you going to go I don't know, wherever we can. Wherever we can we go. We do Scotland again. We do want to do Scotland yeah. again because our trip was cut short a little bit because the um, obviously it started to ramp up in the UK even though Scotland was completely open. Mm. Uh, obviously the tier system come in in the UK so, uh, whilst we were up there and then there was talk basically that they were going to start locking down some of Scotland so we decided just to, just to come back because it wasn't worth being up there. Yeah. Um, it wasn't worth being up there whilst whilst that was going on but yeah we want to go back for a, a longer you know, a much longer period of time really sort of like five six weeks maybe and tour it properly maybe even do the the hebrides as well if we yeah. can fit our van out there i know some of some of the islands are a bit small <laughs> so would you part exchange your motor for another one like a baby Ooh, baby. <laughs> like one. i think the only thing we would part exchange ours for would be uh, like a lightweight another a class but a lightweight narrow bodied a class 
So like the Hymer Exis or the Knaus Van I. Cathargo do the one Cathargo. of those. Yeah, do, Tash doesn't like the colours on the Cathargo because they're that weird off-white, isn't they? The sort of creamy, magnolia colour. See, this is why these ones, you can pick your own colour because you can just paint them. That's it, yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> You've got your magnolia base coat on. Yeah. Ready to go, yeah. Put your own wallpaper on. They always go flowery with the baileys though, don't they? It's very nice. They're quite nice curtains, actually, to be fair. I mean, we've taken our curtains off because we've got cats, so they'll just climb up and there's no point. I can't see much point in curtains. In not when you, yeah, I suppose not when you've got blinds, yeah. especially when you, live in it, when you live in a van full time, or tour full time, should I say. It's, yeah, you don't really need curtains. What do you miss? From living in a house to the from the van, uh, not a lot really. It's quite a lot of freedom. Even even with what's been going on, there's still quite a bit of freedom that we've got living in a van. It's obviously it's a it's a much smaller space, but then the good thing is is you learn to get rid of all the stuff that's superfluous really clutter yeah clutter that you you know when you've got a house you've got all that space you do accumulate stuff that you probably don't need so it's, it's like um i'm currently moving house <laughs> but in the middle of we've got a unit where we're putting a load of stuff and we've been in this house now this like midway house for probably two months <laughs> not even gone back to the unit and the unit is absolutely full, full. <laughs> and i mean you know it wouldn't the stuff wouldn't even be close to fitting in the volume of this yeah yeah, we have kept a, a few. Yeah, we have kept a few bits in storage, but not a lot really. It would be, you know, if we went back into a house, we would, it would literally be half empty, to be honest. Yeah, but then you just gradually fill. Yeah, it we, it probably, stuff that you didn't we need. probably, yeah, we probably would. But there's no, we're in no rush really to to go back to a house yet. We still, still haven't toured as much as we want to yet. So. Want to do you to do? Yeah, uh, yes, we do. Yeah. Yes. I, I think if you are going to live full time in the van, Europe is yes is the one as well. Isn't it? Yeah, we we just we do just want to do it because we've never. I mean, I've been to Europe. I've been to France really more than anything. Um, but yeah, it, I just I think it would be nice. I might also, try and follow the F one for maybe a couple of races as well if we could. Mm. When they when they do the European season, that'd be that'd be pretty pretty cool. So assuming nothing's normal this year, so do you think you'll be in the motor home in two, three years' time? I would imagine so, yeah. Yeah, I don't see, there's no, we're in no rush to go back to bricks and mortar, yeah. It's getting more popular though, isn't it? Oh yes, yeah, there's not many motor homes about now to, to buy, that is. There's uh, a very massive shortage of motor homes at the moment, so yeah, I think it would be difficult for us to find anything else anyway. Very true, very true. So, how else has how has this year been generally? Is, where have you been, or what you managed to get up to, or? Uh, yeah, the, the first lockdown. Did you went to Scotland. Oh, no, was that, <laughs> how, how, how was that? A week? Two weeks? Three weeks? <laughs> uh, three weeks, I think we were there. It was forty-nine weeks. Okay. <laughs> Quick mass that wasn't it? Yeah, it, it has. Down for three months. <laughs> we'll do an awful lot then, goody. <laughs> Yeah. Alright, we've got another six months left. <laughs> yeah, the the first lockdown was a was a little bit tough because the where the campsites were completely shut, that was that was difficult because we it was very difficult to find somewhere to stay. You you could stay some of the campsites opened up if you were a key worker, uh, which I was, but of course me and Tash were Did you only stick? Uh, a little bit, yeah. We did get a little bit some in some places. The the first lockdown was was the worst because yeah. you know people were quite sort of and because I think lots of people tried to sort of escape it in the motorhome. There were lots of people that just sort of left their hometown and went tried to you know went to Cornwall, the, which was pretty much the place where most people went. And uh, yeah, the Cornish people didn't like that, and it, I think. It, happened quite a bit around the country so what sort of comments did you get i guess oh we just get people shouting at us well we never used to stop or argue with anyone it was just people sort of shouting abuse and stuff as we were driving along so it's just i suppose you know it was at that time where people were all quite annoyed yeah yeah i mean it was a very much an unknown to everybody it was first, yeah first lockdown whereas now it's like well, yes yeah, so the second lockdown is that's, completely that's the thing that could have happened to somebody living full-time in a van yeah yeah 
Well, the, the good thing is now is what they've realised yeah. is that there are a lot of people who don't live in conventional ways. Yeah. So th they've realised that there's now no. Th what they've done is they haven't restricted campsites now. If if the people live in a van and they need somewhere to stay, a campsite you can you, generally you can stay there. Um, obviously, they're not open for business, but they're open for people to to stay. So it gives gives people yeah. somewhere to stay basically. And I, was, I know I spoke to somebody who was living full time in Spain at the time. Yeah. And like for the first few days of the first lockdown, the campsite and says, "Yeah, it's fine, you can stay." And then they put the foot down. The government said, "Actually." Yeah. Nothing. Nobody. Full stop. Yeah, um, yeah. There was a. And they were stuck in Spain. No ferries to be able to get back. And just. Yeah. It's. It, 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 yes. It, it, I mean, it was difficult enough in this country. So I can't imagine what it would have been like when when you're over in Europe and in a you know a country where you may not speak the the language either. It must have been horrendous. Um, which is why we're not. We. We want to go to Europe, but we we all want to wait until it's, it's right. <clears throat> until it's the right time to go it's over. Too stressful, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Don't need to imagine it. Don't need stress. <clears throat> it's, it's difficult enough in this country. Yeah. <laughs> so, think about this, John. What are you plan on doing? What another ten years, fifteen years? Yeah, I don't know. There's no real time limit. No. I think for us at the moment. So, what happens with electric? Electric vehicles. What, electric vehicles. Yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest, I've I've been looking forward to electric vehicles for a long time. I, I used to work in the in the motor industry where light passenger cars have been electric for a while, and they're they're brilliant in comparison to the, a normal car with an engine. You know, they they drive so much better, and they're so much cheaper to run. So yeah, I, I would I was really waiting for a sort of a hybrid motorhome or electric motorhome to come out, but there's just it's still in its infancy really um but if it does you know if it does happen i'd be more than happy to to go electric to be honest even to convert my, the van that we've got at the moment would be pr pretty easy to be honest because the, the, i mean the vans have only just really come out haven't they so the manufacturers or the motor train manufacturers have got to catch up with them yeah i think it's the the, the base vehicle like fiat and peugeot and citroen you know mercedes as well and and volkswagen they've been They've really dragged their heels, I think, with with the commercial vehicles, with mm. the with the small vans and the, the heavy vans. They really just haven't even looked into it. They're, they're a, sort of a handful of battery uh, battery vans, yeah. but the the ranges the ranges are like 150 miles, 200 miles, which for a touring motorhome is probably not enough. We also think of the logistics as well as charging up. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the you want to go to Scotland. The charging infrastructure has got to be, it's got to be in place, and and you know it, we've got nowhere near enough. I mean, going to campsites isn't too much of a problem because if you if you think you travel to a campsite and you're going to hook up anyway on yeah. normal electric, whilst it's only sixteen amps, it's still going to charge yeah. charge your high high voltage battery as well. And you know if you're there for a week or you know, two or three days, then it, the likelihood is, is your high voltage battery is going to be fully charged anyway. So it's what quite about a, going for isolated places, like you're saying, going up into the Hebrides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They need, yeah, well, anywhere where it's got electric, really. But yeah, they need a lot more charging stations. I mean, even even fuel stations is bad enough when you get up into the highlands. You know, you you go to a, a fuel station, even if you've got three quarters of a fuel tank you just normally top you top up just yeah. in case because there you, know, you get to a point where there's not another another one for at least two or three hours driving what actually that is the three liter it's yeah it's a three liter yeah so what's the range on film now full of diesel? uh we'll do about 450 right. 450 miles which is where the electric electrification thing comes is you, know, you want to get as close to that as you possibly can really yeah. you don't want to go you know put yourself in a position where you can only do 150 miles yeah, so it's how long would it take to charge one off um it, yeah it all depends on like i mean if you look at like a tesla which is like 100 kilowatt battery yeah. uh you can charge them i think in probably a couple of hours one and a half hours or something like that but that's on their real fast charging right on their real fast charging network so yeah you could potentially look at charging a motorhome at you know, maybe two hours to get you another enough range to 
you know, to get to your next destination. Can you see electric coming out in 20? Did it, did it 2013, did it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Can you see that happening? Yeah, yeah. No, there's no reason why it can't happen sooner. It, it's all down it's to the... infrastructure. The, it's, yeah, the infrastructure and it's down to the, the, the main motor manufacturers as well. Yeah. That, you know, they've got so much investment in petrol and diesel engines at the moment that yeah they it gets deeper than that though doesn't it what about the oil companies yeah yeah i mean they've known for a while that their their market share will be shrinking you, you know you see some of the fuel companies like shell have started to even convert their petrol stations to charging hubs now completely you know no no fuel actually sold all, all charging which is a step in the right direction and I, th I think they've known they've had to go in that way for a while so mm. uh, just just even daft things like shell um, i don't know if this is a new thing or not but when i moved into this house getting the new en energy bills or energy and supply and everything like that it's shell, shell, energy. shell energy yeah i know <laughs> I don't know if that's been around for a long time or not but, uh, you know. I, th I think it's literally been the last couple of years yeah. I've, I've not seen shell energy before this no. all this all sort of transition started you've got to move quick though haven't you oh yes yeah I mean, if, if they move quick i mean i don't think there's enough fuel to or oil or whatever you want to call it to go around forever so they had to do something about it yeah so they just need to diversify they're a, i'm sure they're a wealthy enough company be able to put the money into something else and do you think the motor home industry moved quick do i think it's moved does it does move quick did move quick that they had ample time didn't they when we come out of lockdown everybody wanted a motor home oh no no it was terrible so <laughs> bad british manufacturers were probably the last uh motor home manufacturers to actually go back to work even even now they're probably not up to full i think it's first of september something like that they, they, they finally went back to work swift for example yeah they, they waited until they had the two week shutdown annual yeah. shutdown and then came back so oh, we're not coming back for a couple of weeks <laughs> just up, for two it? weeks because we've got the shutdown Don't add up. no the Euro i think european manufacturers were the time are going to quicker first i think hobby i think it might have been hobby i can't no. remember now it might have been hobby that went back pretty much first and that then that set the scene for everybody else really um but yeah it's, it's really strange that they Every, didn't everyone's short i mean it's a bit like um somebody told me about chasse on the other day yeah uh if you want to order a new one now you're talking 2022 yeah. for a chasse on seriously Which, <laughs> yeah okay if you're talking something premium yeah it used to be handmade then I don't, i've never i've never known there'd be a waiting list for a chasse on no. to be honest <laughs> I quite like the Chassons. But they're alright, yeah. Like, like are very nice. It's, it's like but the older ones, but the older ones are yeah. bad actually. Yeah. Um, so, but it's, it's like a waiting list for 18 months for <laughs> Ford Mondeo, <laughs> which is what you, the sort of level you're talking, aren't you? Yeah. Which just does not make sense at all. And then it's just whatever comes through. I think most of the British stuff is getting towards sold out. Anything that is coming through to the dealers is already gone. Mm. So it's going to be an yeah. interesting year for for the dealers going through. Yeah, we've already lost one. Who what was the company that just went and disappeared? Oh, December. Well, that was Bex. Bex Motorhomes. Yeah. Bex uh, Motorhomes. No, massive. We nearly nearly bought one from Bex actually. I think they've been around since the sixties, sixties or seventies. Mm. So that's a company that's just disappeared. Not sure why. Not much behind it. But it's a got. shame. It is a shame to see these companies go. And I think there'll be a few more as well if they can't get the stock to sell. Yeah, yeah. There's one. Uh, don't don't you think over the last few years though the bigger motor companies have just got kept expanding and expanding and expanding, haven't they? But yeah. They've, renew, renew, uh, they've relied heavily on the new stuff. You know, mm. if you t talk about someone like Brownhills who do does hundreds, maybe thousands of new units a year, and all of a sudden they're not there to sell, then what? You know, do you do? Well, we had a look before one day. They've got about 13 branches. Marquis, yeah. Marquis. Marquis. Was it Marquis? Yeah. 13 branches. And we looked on, I think it was, was it about 110 motorhomes through 13 branches. Yeah. Used. Yeah. So that's motorhomes. 10 a branch. But if they're not selling the new, they can't get the parts that changes in. Well, well. So it's scary. So I think there'll be one or two more uh, motorhome dealers disappear because if they, can't, if they haven't got anything to sell. There's one dealer the other day I spoke to. That why do, do you need so many salesmen? When they're really selling for themselves. That's right, yeah. And there's one dealer <laughs> I spoke to the other day, they do two brands of motorhomes and they're 
getting a bit worried now because they haven't got anything coming through really that they can sell until the 21 models come out. Wow. Sorry, the 22 models come out. Because the 21 models are already out, already aren't they? Point. So September Jesus. of 21 is when they can first start and get something that they can actually sell. Because most of the allocation that they've already had for this year, they can't get any more from the factory. And the ones that are coming from the factory, they've already sold. So then you might get your bigger companies that have the different branches probably streamlined down the branches that have so many. Yeah. Yeah. So they can keep more stock in one place. I, mean, I guess it's a bit like the car industry that used to be on. Yeah. It used to be in there, not going to have the branches. I want the thought, and they're not going to have the sales staff. You don't need 15 sales staff at one branch when it's all pretty much online. That's the problem. Yeah, so um, it's been interesting to see how it, how it's changed. Like the, the car sales has actually changed you know, much more online now. You see so many more adverts for online car sales. But you know, I think with the trouble with motorhomes is it, it's but difficult. Just pick your car, don't you? We deliver it, and then you've yeah. got 14 days, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, so it's... It's like, you know, you've got Kazoo, you've got Kazam and yeah. Shazam and... All yeah, loads, loads of different companies have just literally popped up. And you've uh, got We Buy a Car, yeah. who normally sell the stuff through the auction, what they've got into it with Cinch. Yeah. Which you've seen that advert, it's been it's played to death on radio yeah. and TV. Yeah. But they obviously see a gap in the market. Something you wouldn't do with motorhomes, though, would you? You couldn't pull No, it it's, it's one thing that you really struggle to do i think um you know distance selling it, it's so difficult in a market because the motorhome is such a big purchase mm. you, know, you i think you know even a, an entry level motorhome you're looking at even used as like twenty five thousand pounds and that's a lot of money to to buy yeah. something blind uh you know, you're buying a house though aren't you yeah, uh, essentially what, yeah what i mean by that is it's down to layout isn't it? yeah down to like you say, don't like the material, do like the material and things yeah. like that. And if that's something you really can't do online, you've no. got to... <clears throat> and that's where the uh, the motor home dealers do need to be creative going forward, but I think they'll just about get away with it because there ain't anything to sell anyone. Finn, you're 20 now. By the time you start to buy a motor home, you'll be, what, 50? Yeah. 30, 30 years? years yeah. yeah. Would you buy a motor home online or would you have to come and look at it? I'd have to come and look at it. You would? Yeah, 100%. The daft thing is, what's the difference between the car and a motor if you're looking at things like that? Wow, well, 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 if you haven't ever seen one everything you do is on you do is online, isn't it? It's personal, isn't it? A motorhome, and you, you, it's a motorhome, isn't it? It's not, it's not a car. It's not as simple as that. It's not. Or if it drives, it's about inside and how it feels. And would you buy a car online? Yeah, I've got, I could buy a car online. Would you? I bought a few online. I bought. Uh, last three or four online without seeing them and just went to collect them. Yeah. From wherever it's cheapest, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. It's blown my theory, then, aren't it? <laughs> I, I am very much online, yeah. And that's probably four, I think the last four, four vehicles I've bought have all been online. Oh. A car, that is, not a motorhome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, 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 would, you wouldn't you would buy that one online, then? Yeah, it's d different, I think, for a motorhome compared to a car. Not something I've really thought about having said that. No. Hmm. Although I technically do buy off the stuff online because you have a look at what they are and then put a price in it and then buy it as a dealer. Yeah, you do, don't you? Yeah. You're not buying it for yourself, though. Really. Yeah, it's no. different though because yeah, that's it. You're not yeah. not buying it for yourself, are you? So, yeah, if you were gonna, if you had to think you had to move out of your house into a motorhome, would you be happy just buying one online? I'll have a think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a think yeah, because yeah, the way you look at it, it's a unit. Yeah, I mean, I do it's get... It's not like John's looking at his... He's going to be spending most of his time in the van. Okay, so, so here's, here's another one. Here's, here, okay, this is probably a better way for me to, to describe how I would act with a motorhome. Cars, there are hundreds of videos and footage online, so you know every ounce of that car before you've even gone out to it. Motorhome industry isn't that. There's not many people who do full-on detailed reviews on, on motorhomes. Show you every little cupboard and everything like that. Yeah, I think that is something that, that so, I think some have started to do it. Started you know, this year and we, they've we, had no choice because of COVID. That's it, yeah, we're talking well, like... Yeah. Nearly every motorhome dealer's doing it now. When I've been checking around, so there, there ain't many yeah. who, who aren't. They, 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 they're trying now, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, you do need to, you know, you need to literally like go around, open every single cupboard so you can yeah. see what's in there, you know, see where the, I mean, for me, a bit more 
technical, but see where the battery is, see where the boiler is, you know, think, you know, things like that. S see how easy it looks, you know, yeah, yeah. to to get to things. So yeah, that's. Um, <sighs> but I pr I'd probably say that's the difference because, like, if I buy a car, I research the absolute nuts off it, and I yeah. watch all the videos and probably watch five hours worth of footage online and then I'll commit to buy one whereas yeah. a motor home there isn't that detail around mm. so that's probably the difference to be to be fair between them all mm. so John thank you for coming on um, for everybody who wants to see their channel it's life beyond bricks they have committed very much to motorhome life yes we have just, uh, seen and uh, tune in for a few more in the future bye bye <laughs> <laughs>